Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and today we're gonna take a look at the 3D model packs for Element 3D. So what happens is each of these packs has a ton of 3D models, and those 3D models are accessible directly inside of Element. So if we take a look, we'll just kind of run through the different packs, and I'll kind of give you just a brief overview of each pack. So here we have the projectile weapons pack and it's packed with bullets and grenades and missiles and uh, just tons of cool assets like that. And if we can jump into the scene setup. So once you apply element onto a layer, you can go into your scene. And once you're in your scene, you can come over to the model browser. And then when you find the pack you're looking for, so the projectile weapons, you can basically look through all of the different objects and one click to load them. So you can zoom in with the middle mouse button um, and uh, just left drag to uh, take a look at them. Now by default the draft textures are on so if you want to get close turn that off and you'll be able to see a lot more detail. Now the draft textures really all it does is it makes it so that you can load models faster into the GPU. So we we'll close that. Um, let's just take a look at a couple of these different models. So we've got some really cool looking uh, missiles. Here, we'll switch this back. I'm just changing the uh, environment map reflection to the uh, default. So, we've got, uh, you know, this great, great looking missile here. Uh, we've got things like uh, weapons, a crossbow. What does it all mean? Um, we've got a great uh, flashbang. We've got the grenade. This may look familiar. And, uh, you know, some other weapons, some, uh, you know, a pipe bomb a shotgun shell casing, an axe, and uh, even a triumphant sword. So you can see, you know, these are really uh, high quality looking models and stuff. So, so if you want to use multiple objects, what you want to do is assign them to the different group outputs. So just uncheck a certain group and assign it to another group and the object will show up in that group. So I'm going to close this. All right, so now we have the motion design pack. So this has got a lot of the more abstract type of objects like the paint and uh, the arrows and some cool things like that. So it's just a kind of a fun, you know, example I just put together of some different things that you can do. And this paint bucket element actually comes with the starter models in element. So we'll jump into the scene here. And again, let's come over to the motion design pack. And by the way, all the packs have a blue folder, so it's a little easier to find. And uh, you can just go through and uh, take a look at all the pieces. Now, the broken glass, all of these pieces are multi-mesh pieces, and they're broken up in a very interesting way. So if you pull up the wireframe, you can see they're broken up in different ways. So that way, when you shatter it or do something, it'll actually look a lot different than just a you know organized uh, piece of glass. So that's always cool. So there's a lot of great elements in the motion design pack. I think there's over 250 models, um, and they're all really high quality stuff. So you can see, go off wireframe here. You know, some fun kind of objects that you can use. Um, you know, for uh, motion design. So go and close out of that. And now we have the sports pack. So this is a cool pack. It's got, uh, you know, a bunch of different sports. So we've got these uh, sports helmets here. Let's go and just jump into the scene. And, uh, you know, it looks good. It's got the ambient occlusion baked in. So it's a really clean looking model. Let's uh, click on the sports here. So sports has got a lot of cool things. So we've got the baseball that's, uh, you know, it's pretty clean looking baseball. And then we've got the more worn down baseball. So we're really trying to give you some variations. Uh, I'll shut the draft textures off there. Um, you know, some serious models like this baseball stadium. And remember, these are pre-textured, but you could even do things like go into, uh, you know, even just to the base materials and apply a material to the object. And you can really just start creating a cool like motion graphics type of design that doesn't necessarily rely on the uh, the textures that are there. So if you're thinking about these objects as being, oh, well, that's exactly that, or that's exactly something else, well, just be thinking that as soon as you start adding some different shaders, you know, you can really just create some, you know, some abstract looks based on the uh, models. And of course, you got the skateboard, so if you're ready to ollie out of there, well, you know what to do. 
Um, this is a cool model, this uh, stadium lights model. Uh, maybe turn this on. And there's a few other items like a, a really cool stopwatch that uh, we used in some of the uh, earlier examples. So let's uh, turn this brightness down. And also to reset your view, you can just choose reset view. And then to reset your viewer options, you can also click it here. Now, sometimes models aren't oriented or rotated the way you think that they should be. So for example, this tennis racket, so it's up and down, but let's say you want to change the orientation. Well, you can actually do it right here. So you can actually change the orientation before it's imported into your scene. So it's kind of a handy way to, uh, to work with stuff. So go ahead and close this. Let's take a look at the fresh fruit. So this is a really fun collection because, uh, you know, it's uh, delicious. Got, uh, you know, some cherries and some depth of field. That always looks good. Let's jump into the scene, take a look at the offerings. Um, I don't know what that means. So fresh food, we've got, uh, you know, we've got some apples, um, the avocado, because you have to have that, right? Um, banana, and these are really, you know, nice looking models with some great textures, you know, so they really, you know, they really look great. Uh, we'll go down here. There's some different variations of, uh, of the models and things like that, like bread and, you know, you've got the cherry and you've got the dual cherry. And then we've got some kiwi and, you know, these lime, uh, you know, they really look cool, they have nice, uh, you know, reflectivity on them orange slice so you can make like you know that energy drink commercial where all the fruits flying out and uh, you know it's cramming into a bottle and somehow you're gonna take a drink and all that fruit is gonna go into your body so bam that's how that rolls so next up we have the money and casino pack so this is a pretty cool pack and there's a lot to this pack even though it may not seem that way so you can see here there's like $50 bills, $20 bills, and $100 bills. And they're all kind of mixed up and they're look, it looks like they're kind of floating around. One of the ways you can animate this is if you go into the particle replicator, you can go to the position noise and we can turn up the amount here. And then we can animate the evolution. So if we were just to animate this value, you can see that everything just kind of wobbles around. So let's just do a quick expression. We'll do like time times uh, 50. So everything's moving around, but it's not rotating around. So then we can go into the particle look and control the rotation. So we can go into the rotation noise, turn the amount up, and you don't actually have to, let's see, you don't have to animate the evolution if there's position noise on. You just have to try to find the, uh, the right balance. So right here, kind of turn the noise scale down a little bit and uh, you know everything kind of flutters around so if I lower this number so let's say we turn the value up but lower the noise scale what that will do is uh, make the rotation a lot slower so we could turn this up even more so you could animate this and you could really create some cool some cool looks and not to mention the entire replicator could be animated you know simultaneously so you could be you know rotating it around while everything is sort of fluttering uh, you do need to be careful make sure the noise value is not too high so uh, the pieces don't uh, you know jitter around too much maybe some motion blur I'd buy that for a dollar. Now, let's go and jump inside and take a look at some of the different models. So, if we go down to the Money and Casino, bam. It's a ton of different models in here. And there's different things, you know, there's variations of different things, but let me show you uh, the money here. So, you can see there's, uh, you know, A through F dollar bills. Now, the key here is that they're all slightly different in terms of their distortion. So if you use multiple pieces, it won't look like they're all exactly the same. Now, here's something really cool about it. So if we look at it, there's actually multiple materials on this single object. So if we hide one, unhide another, 
then we can actually see we have all of the different denominations. So if you need to do, you know, a commercial for, you know, Subway and it's $5 foot logs or whatever, um, there you go. Uh, you, you have all the different denominations that you can kind of mix and match. Um, you know, we've got this cool roulette table here. So to celebrate, let's go and uh, pop the cork and uh, cheers. Um, okay, cool. So let's go into the music collection. So let me just uh, speak into the mic here. Um, this is obviously a great collection because it's just a ton of, you know, very realistic objects. Uh, we can go down here to the sound and music collection. We've got a great acoustic guitar. You know, there's tons of, uh, of detail on these models. And, uh, you know, they look great. And finally, I know you guys have been looking for this, a boom box. Look at this thing. The detail in this, it's amazing. Why would anyone ever buy this model? You wouldn't. Unless you were buying a pack with a whole bunch of other stuff that you actually did want. And then you got the bonus boombox model that you always wanted, but you never wanted to buy because people would make fun of you. So it all works out. It all works out. Uh, we've got some, you know, some useful stuff, some cassette tapes. We've got some uh, big concert speakers. And you could probably create this huge array of like a hundred speakers that, you know, look really insanely loud. Um, you know, that's uh, obviously what anyone would want to do. Um, you know, we've got the uh, electric guitars here in a couple different colors. And uh, not to mention the headphones. You know, very detailed keyboard model that, uh, you know, it's kind of unbelievably detailed. So uh, that's kind of a nice, you know, sound mixer. Got like a music player and uh, you know some different uh, record players and here's another cool thing if you're familiar with the multi object stuff is that the record is actually a multi uh, material object so we can hide it and then you could load this record into another channel you know like group two and then you could animate them together so you could animate the record spinning and you know things like that uh, kind of a kind of a handy thing and then for everyone who plays guitar, hopefully you know what this thing is. This is called a tuner. Um, all right. And of course, we've got the concert uh, grand piano, which uh, is uh, kind of unbelievably detailed. We can go inside of here and uh, yeah, pretty decent. Um, okay, so this is the sound and music pack. We're going to close out of that. All right, guys, I hope this uh, helps you kind of understand uh, the various packs and uh, what's included. My name is Andrew Kramer. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.